Good evening, everybody. Tonight I have a special guest that is going to talk about something. It's one of my favorite things, and you have to make it one of yours, too. Um, I have Patrick Jackson from yellowletters.com, and this is such an important thing. We've been using this service for a while, and um, it's really, really important that you have to do direct marketing. Uh, the market has changed. If you think you're just going to rely on realtors, you are in la-la land, as they say. You need to get to the people, the sellers, who may not even know that they want to sell yet. So uh, this is how I do it, and I definitely advise you to become an expert. So that's why we have the expert. So good evening, Patrick. Thank you for joining us. And uh um, yep. Yeah, um, I know that you've been doing this for a while, and you uh, you came from Michigan, and you're a business management person, and so you know about business and and setting up things and marketing and all kinds of stuff like that. How did you get into real estate? Uh, pretty much uh, ran into some people that was interested pretty much in the market. I was always doing advertising, uh, marketing in different, different areas, and really got involved in uh, real estate, uh, ran into some friends and was marketing, uh, got involved in marketing with them, and then all of a sudden just got into the business. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's great. It's just so, I can't think of anything more important to your success today than learning how to do this. This is, you know, really, really important. And funny thing, while I was uh, waiting for you, I was listening to your, uh, you, when you call your office, you have like a little thing that plays in the background and has you talking about, you know, making sure that you continue to follow up with the people. Uh, and uh, you right. uh, talked about how a year later someone had called you and and that's so true people they they quit too soon they just quit too soon it's just amazing so anyway so patrick let's get started and tell us exactly you know what's important that we need to know about the marketing system and and you know how the whole thing works and how your yellow letters fits into the marketing plans uh, so, definitely um you know most of the people that that try to get involved, they 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 do a couple of things. They they get in, involved in wanting to do real estate for a few reasons. They either want to get out of debt, they either want to get rich, or they want to quit their job. And so, majority of the people they see a a commercial on TV, or they get inspired by someone else letting them know uh, pretty much what is happening. And then you know they kind of get themselves involved and try to you know pretty much make a difference for themselves and want to try to you know maneuver themselves in a particular a place that they can become more successful. And with that being said, majority of the people, they look at it as in a way of trying to make a change for themselves. And so with real estate investing, uh, getting involved in that area, uh, definitely some key things that people need to do to be proactive in, in getting involved uh, within the real estate market. So we, we find it to be very, very, very important, uh, especially in today's time, uh, if the market is not uh, – as 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 fruitful as it used to be, but uh it definitely is something that uh that people need to get involved with and make a change for themselves. A lot of the times uh people they get involved and they, they look at it in a way as uh you know, they see this person they're saying they're making ten thousand dollars a month or they're making uh fifty thousand dollars a month and they wanna jump in and do that right away. And so the understanding that you have to actually put in work in order for those numbers to come about. Um, it's very, very important that people understand that um, you have to build it as a business. It's not something that you're going to come in and just do uh, one thing and then all of a sudden uh, you're making um, all this money, but you have to actually be consistent and uh, create a avenue for yourself. And so with advertising, uh, anything um, dealing with business, uh, any business venture, have to advertise. You have to put advertising dollars into your business in order to be successful. Uh, I like to talk about Geico. Uh, Geico uh, is a is a phenomenal company. Uh, the owner of Geico is Warren Buffett, and Warren Buffett back in 2011 he spent 994 million dollars in advertisement. Uh, in advertisement, he spent that money, and but he was not one of the top advertisers. You have Product and Gamble. Uh, you have Ford and Chevrolet, which were some of the with the top three advertisers, uh, which spent billions of dollars in advertising. But with that being said, we know that in real estate, we're not going to spend that type of money, uh, you know, as far as billions of dollars in advertising to get a 
thirty uh, percent discount on a on a home and make a profit. You know that type of spread. And historically, uh, Phyllis, it, there's been five ways that people try to get their phone to ring. You know, and, and particularly in the real estate market, it's been bandit signs, it's been websites, it's been newspaper uh, ads, it's been postcards and yellow letters. And then we also have another product that we just introduced uh, this year that that people are are pretty excited about as well. Uh, so we're going to talk about bandit signs a little bit. And, and with yellow letters, we like to, in my presentation, I like to try to engage everyone in, in, in all the facets of, of advertisement. So pretty much with bandit signs, uh, those are people that are looking to go into these areas or don't know what a bandit sign is. It pretty much looks like this. It's a yellow, uh, usually a, a yellow uh, uh, yard sign that pretty much says, we buy houses. We kind of have some type of verbiage that said any condition, any situation, and it pretty much has a phone number. Uh, and with that particular lead, uh, the advantages of that um, is that it's low cost. You know, you can get a bandit sign, you know, 11 by uh, 17 bandit sign for re relatively cheap. And, you know, bandit signs particularly get motivated uh, prospects. You can put them at your Home Depot. You can put them at freeway uh, exits. And you would get, you know, some, some calls coming in uh, with that. Some of the disadvantages of that is that it's illegal in most areas. Uh, so, you know, you kind of want to be careful. You can get penalized. Uh, they're contacting you, and, you know, they can give you a call, and they have you come out, and then all of a sudden you're getting hit with a fine if they're able to get in contact with you. So uh, making sure that you, you're covering yourself in that area. And people use uh, different numbers to, to negate that as well. Uh, Another thing is that it doesn't filter the prospect type. So if you're looking for a, say, for instance, an absentee owner or, say, for instance, you're looking for a mortgage late uh, particular prospect, that bandit sign will not filter that particular person. So you have to go in and uh, pretty much make do with the lead that's coming in. And so if you're not familiar with dealing with people in different avenues or different facets, then you won't know how to pretty much deal with them, and that's why that lead kind of makes it uh, not predictable. Uh, again, going into websites, websites are very, very important. I encourage everyone to have a website because websites build credibility. Um, very, very important uh, to have a website and have one uh, that looks professional. Uh, very, very important. I'm pretty sure you know this, Phyllis. Uh, oh yeah, building, <laughs> I spent uh, a lot of time and <laughs> yeah, effort and, and money. You know, like just like anything, you want to be an expert at something, you have to hire a mentor. And I have a a marketing mentor that I pay money to who helps me with this stuff to make sure my uh, uh, my website is good. Right, and I, I've seen I've seen your website, especially with the association, and you keep it up to date. Um, you have fresh information on there. Um, it's very informative and looks professional, and that's what people are looking for with which builds credibility when a person comes to your website. And then, then your website answers questions. So if a person is looking at your particular site and you're saying that you're selling homes, you know, telling them what type of home you sell, maybe having some testimonials and things like that on your site is very, very important. And um, also you can use something such as a, what we call a squeeze page, which pretty much is a, a one-page uh, landing page, which you can have, uh, you know, a, a video of yourself, um, of your homes, um, you know, you making deals, um, great testimonials from other people, uh, having some uh, a, a way to catch their information where they can fill out the form and then you can be able to call that lead back. And, and those build uh, great motivated sellers, which, you know, you can go into SEO and things like that that can, um, you know, go into some real detailed uh, information on how you can build your site for your area, uh, maybe your city or zip code that you can target uh, where you can generate leads that way as well. Uh, some of the disadvantages of uh, a website is that, it, is that, you know, if you're just using a website, you know, it's like a big phone book. So, you know, if you're just, you know, going to build a website and expect to get leads, that, that person that's on that website, like we all do, we go and research uh, other places. So if I'm uh, looking for a hotel, uh, I may go to, one hotel, I may check another hotel online and check another hotel online. And so if that's the only form of advertisement that you're going to do, uh, you're putting yourself at a real disadvantage uh, because they're going to be shopping around. And another uh, 
thing that Phyllis said earlier, that people don't invest into their website. I would rather for a person not have a website than to have a crappy website. You definitely don't want a website that looks terrible. Uh, you just don't want to throw anything up. Um, those that are that don't have the funds and you're looking to put something together uh, relatively cheap, I would rec recommend Weebly.com. That's W-E-E-B-L-Y.com. Go there. You can sign up for free. They have phenomenal templates that you can use. Um, it looks a little bit more professional. Um, you, the only disadvantage um, of that is that it has their free uh, web hosting on there, and you can upgrade that for about $5 a month. Uh, you should be able to have that in your budget uh, where you can get that, that little logo off, and you'll be able to build yourself a nice little squeeze page that you have something that looks relatively professional. And uh, it, it's pretty much a do-it-yourself in this particular format. Uh, I like Weebly because it, you know, it kind of helps the, the person that's trying to start off and they can't afford that person that they're trying to pay, and they can pretty much develop something uh, themselves. So you can definitely check out Weebly. Uh, dot com and use their services. Yeah. You uh, saying that's a free definitely. site? That's free. They'll set up the website for you for free. Yeah, you can set up a website absolutely free um, oh, on Weebly. dot com. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. well, that's that's yeah. good. No, good. Okay. Yeah, and that, that's why I said in our presentation is not just all about uh, yellow letters and our advertisement, but trying to help the the investor all around because we think that you need all those mm -hmm. all those avenues of, of generating leads. So uh, not just using one. But using all of the the facets of uh, of advertising, mm -hmm. uh, but then newspapers, uh, newspapers are starting to become outdated. But they used to really create great, great, great motivated sellers. Uh, but now newspapers are a bit expensive compared to, um, you know, online advertisement and the bigger bang for your buck, uh, what one would say. So when you're looking at uh, viewership that's pretty much declining, and so you have to look at the competition that's there. And so, pretty much, majority of the people that are on there now are really uh, real estate agents uh, that are doing some things on there. But uh, a major disadvantage as well is that you're limited on your message uh, for your space. So, you know, newspapers are really becoming obsolete because a lot of them are going online as well. Uh, so, you can do even advertisement through your local newspaper online. Uh, so, you know, definitely want to uh, – I, I really don't recommend newspapers, but those of you that still do it, if it's effective in your area, then definitely use it. And we're going to go into postcards. Uh, postcards. Postcards, some of the advantages of those is that they're low cost. Um, it's relatively uh, cheap to use a, a postcard. You're able to have a large message on there. You're able to pinpoint a target audience, and that goes to if you want to specifically target – a mortgage late group, if you want to specifically target a absentee out-of-state owner, um, you can grab that list, and then you'll be able to send to that pinpointed audience that you want to target. And um, that, that's very important and very crucial when, when doing mailings and, and when you're trying to uh, target a specific area. Um, they also uh, filter out a lot of uh, sellers and people that, that are really interested in, in and selling their home, and they're really, really great for QR codes. Um, those of you that don't know what those are, they're pretty much a, a generated code that uh, you can see there on the postcard, which I'll show you just in a moment, um, a lot a lot bigger, where the person would uh, have a scanner on their phone, and a lot of people are using these now. They have a scanner on their phone, they scan this code that's on your postcard, and it can go to your squeeze page or website. So when they scan it, uh, it'll go directly to their squeeze page or website. And it's just another way to, uh, really? to capture that, that yeah. particular person. That, that's a very interesting idea. I hadn't thought about that. So they can just scan it on their phone. Is that what you're saying, and it'll go right to your squeeze page? Yes. Hmm, they can scan that, that uh -huh. little barcode that's there, oh, uh -huh. uh, and then right, right off their phone, and it'll go directly to um, your, your wherever you want it to go. It can mm -hmm, be your squeeze mm -hmm. page your mm -hmm. contact page, whatever mm -hmm. page you want it mm -hmm. to go to, oh, it can go directly to that page. Yes. Very interesting. Hmm. Very okay. useful tool. One of the some of the disadvantages, Phil, is that the normal return rate on postcards are really, really low. Uh you know, you you're looking at a quarter percent, even up to uh two percent. Some even have up to five percent return 
on postcards, but it's very important that people uh, understand that if you're going to be using this type of advertisement, this form of marketing, um, it, it's great to do these in bulk. Uh, and the reason why is because it get lost in the mail pieces. It, it get lost like junk mail uh, because they a person, you know, we're, we're going to the, the mailbox and we're grabbing all this mail and the postcard looks like junk mail. So it can, it can get funneled uh, in that, that particular group. So just keep in mind, if you're going to do postcards, do them in large amounts. And see, as, as we blew it up here on the screen, you can see the QO, QR code uh, there where they can uh, pretty much scan that QR code and it can go straight to your, your, um, your website or squeeze page. But also with this postcard, as you can see, it's customized to the individual. Uh, so how it says there at the top, one, two, three, uh, Love Lane, and it's pretty much that person's address. And so that person knows that this is a uh, car specific to me, and then it's addressed to them. It says, hi, James. Uh, then it says, my name is uh, the, the particular investor uh, that you're uh, – I want to buy your house in your area. I'm hoping uh, – speak to you about your property at, again, 123 Love Lane, their address. And then, you know, pretty much on the back side, it has some information, uh, and it also incorporates that particular person's address, again, to where on either side, uh, they're catching the message that is personalized to them. So these are very useful in uh, customizing, and the, the prospect is receiving this particular document uh, form of advertisement is knowing that you are targeting them which is very, very important. Uh, now going on to yellow letters. Yellow letters are phenomenal. Uh, they can get you anywhere uh, from, you know, 5 to 15% uh, depending on uh, your particular mailing. And we've had some people that even told us they have 50%, which is just super phenomenal uh, for, for some people. But uh, definitely you should be getting at least – a a three percent response rate on your yellow letters, and a lot of people um, have to understand is depending on the target that you're sending it to, and the type of yellow letter that you're sending. There are a lot of people that are out there coming up with these yellow letters. They're wanting to market their yellow letter or use this particular yellow letter, but some of those yellow letters are not effective. Uh, a big reason being is that some letters that people use are too long. We like to use letters we've seen across the market. If it's straight to the point, get the call, you want the person to call. That's the bottom line. Everything else is on you, the investor, the way that you use your wording, catching the lead, and dealing with that particular prospect. And so you just want the call to come in. That's that's what advertisement is all about, is getting that particular lead to call you. I have to uh, tell you the, that we we did a lot of postcards, and I I spent a lot of time and money on designing the slickest postcards I've ever seen. They were fantastic. <laughs> we got nowhere. It wasn't until we started using yellow letters that we got a decent response. They they really work. It really works. They they do. They do, and and the reason they do, Phil, is because it, it creates a bond with the seller. And, 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 uh, we we go to the mailbox all the time. When we walk to the mailbox. What do we do? We open up the mailbox. We grab all the mail out. As we're walking back to our door, we're filtering the mail in our hands. In one hand, we're putting the important mail that is addressed to us and all the little Caesar coupons and, and all of the oil change and insurance uh, advertisements. Uh, we're putting it all in one hand, and we're putting all the important mail in the other hand. And then we're sitting uh, the junk mail on the counter or in the trash, in and we're going trash. to sit down. Right. right. <laughs> I, I open my, when I go to my post office box, I t the first thing I do is put the waste paper basket next to the counter. And then I go through <laughs> one by one, and if it doesn't look like something that, especially if it's got a barcode or something dopey like that, if it isn't handwritten or something that I don't, uh, that, you know, I can definitely identify it as junk, uh, it's going to go in the trash. That's it. I mean, I'm, I'm not, it's not even getting to my car. That, that that's how, that's how we react as as a normal person consumer that that goes to the mailbox, and that's how that yellow letter all majority of them get open. That's why you get so many uh, return calls because that particular letter is personal, and that per that that actual letter goes in the pile 
of that person feel as, as though this document is important. And so they open it up. They open it right. up and, and they right. read it. And, you know, everything in marketing is about the people seeing your message. Why do you think people spend millions of dollars doing a Super Bowl commercial for 15 to 30 seconds? It's because they have people seeing their message. And that's what advertisement and marketing is all about, is people seeing your message. And the the more people that see your message, the more responses you're going to get and the more deals you're going to make, especially as an investor. So that is very, very important. One of the disadvantages I, I, a person will say is that you get a huge response rate, especially if you uh, take on our uh, our methods and, and, and you're able to sit down with us and we're able to create a strategy for you. You know, some people, they're like, hey, man, I'm getting too many calls. Uh, I need to, you know, slow down. Uh, my mailings a little bit. I need to spread them out because I'm getting too many calls and I cannot, you know, yeah, do, a, I, do enough follow up. So right. you know, it's very important. That I know you that a happened plan. to us. Yeah, that happened to us. We dumped them all out the first day. That was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> it was a mistake. Now we do it like 250 at a time because it was See, just yeah. like it was, it was crazy. Yeah. It will. It will because. Because I, I know for you, Phil, you want to you, when that person calls, you want to be able to get back to them as soon as possible, right? Right, right, right. Absolutely. And that that's where you know learning that strategy of you know what you can handle, uh, you know what what is happening in your particular market. Then as you continue to go, you may want to cut it back or up it, and uh, find that sweet spot that's comfortable uh, for you as an investor. Uh, definitely want to. You know, talk about uh, the reading, using reading. Uh, we found that that's very, very effective. We also offer um, blue as well uh, and pink on our pink letters. Uh, we have pink letters that, that a lot of the people find very uh, interesting. And uh, people have been getting pretty good responses on our pink letters as well. But for our, for our yellow letters, we use red ink. We found that that's uh, been a very key attribute to people um, giving a response. Red is a, a color of response. So uh, the red in marketing uh, is an alert, so uh, people respond to that color uh, very quickly. Uh, definitely want to have, like I was saying before, a short, sweet message. You don't want to prolong the message, but also found that the longer um, the, the, uh, the particular letter is, it filters out the person. As well, and so we we always recommend that your first mailing, if you're going to do a first mailing, make sure it's short. If you're going to do a follow up mailing, you can make that that second mailing a little bit more detailed. You don't want your first mailing to be so detailed that you're not uh, emphasizing the emphasis on how you're going to market to your particular market. So you have to ensure what you're doing uh, in that market that it shows. Uh, the consumer that they're reading your message quickly, and so when you do your your follow up, uh, they are you're, you're able to give them a little bit more information uh, during that follow up. And so if we look at this first letter, and this is what we're talking about by short and sweet, uh, this one pretty much says, "Dear Peter, hi, my name is Michael. I would like to buy your house at 1801 Oak Street. Please call me at my phone number. Please call Thanks, Michael." Very straight to the point, simple. You're telling them who they are. You know who they are. Uh, you, you're telling them your name. You're telling them the interest of what you're, you're, you're notifying them about. You're letting them know that you know what property that you're interested in, and then you're giving them a way to contact you. And that's all pretty much the information you need in this particular first mailing. And so then you're getting all those calls, and so then, you know, you're pretty much uh, aligning yourself to be able to uh, get those calls in. And the second reason why you're getting those calls is because of the invitation style envelope. The invitation style envelope is handwritten. So when that person looks at it, they're looking at it in a way like, well, uh, this, this looks quite interesting. I, I think I'm going to open this, this letter. It's like somebody addressed something to me. It seems important. So they open it up. And it is something important. It's your message that you want to convey to them. And so you're going to have people respond to you based on the invitation style envelope that is handwritten, and then you also have a short, sweet message 
that this person doesn't have to read through all of this information um, in order to get to the message that you're trying to convey to them. And so we find that to be very important. Another thing, especially on the first mailing, a person does not want you to know that you know about their business. So if you're if you're doing a mortgage late list or if you you're doing an inheritance list or anything of that sort, you, you don't want too much detailed information in there because people get offended by you knowing too much information and you're you're putting it in the letter. So uh, you definitely want to try to at least keep that search mailing. Uh, short and sweet, uh, so everything can run smoothly for yourself. And then, you know, like like this letter here, uh, just as an, an example, could be a follow-up letter. Pretty much it says, Dear guy, my name is Michael, and I would like, want to buy your property at 1801 Oak Street. If you're interested in selling, please call me at my phone number. I can act quickly with no long, drawn-out uh, bank approvals. I will buy your property in as-is condition. Please call me anytime. Especially, Michael, my phone number, then P.S., I'm wanting to buy soon, please call. So you give them just a little bit more in information in that particular letter, uh, which can be customized. You can customize the letter yourself. Uh, you, if you have some information that you feel that, that is suitable for your market or what you want to convey to your prospect, um, you can send us that information. Our design department, uh, proofing department, they'll be able to put one together for you. And uh, and no no extra charge and be able to put something custom for you if, if you you feel as though your your template is uh is even better. But also with the follow up letter, it's also delivered in a different type of envelope. So your your first letter is sent in a number in, a, in an invitation style, and then your follow up uh, letter is actually sent in a number ten envelope. So it's presented in a different package as well, which is very important. Uh, for your response rates uh, when it comes to doing a follow-up to that same person. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the well, can, I ask a, can I ask a question? You can, so you're saying you that the body of the letter as well should be different each time you send it out, or is it the same letter just in a different envelope? If you, you, you mean if you're doing a follow-up to that same person? Y yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, I think the message should be different. Uh-huh, okay. Uh -huh. Whether or not they have spoken to you or not. Correct. Yeah, okay. Like we have one that, if you want to keep it short and simple, is one I just said, forecast. Mm -hmm. it just, the, the word forecast is just added to it. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to keep the same letter, short and simple, uh, just change it up just a little bit, you can just add forecast to it, and then you'll be able to, um, you know, push it forward that way and mm -hmm. uh, at least have something just a little bit different on your mm -hmm. second note. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good point. Good point. So with the, the this is a new product. Like we had, we had the five main uh, historically uh, products that people use, which were uh, all those that we just went over. And so a new product that we've came uh, forth with, and very new to the real estate industry, uh, we are finding it to be very effective, which are called zip letters. It's pretty much a new concept is to diversify your direct mail marketing campaign because of its appearance of a time-sensitive document, the mail piece will get open. And this document is something kind of looks like it's from the government, like it's one of your taxes or uh, something dealing with your taxes or maybe something from your DMV um, or something of that sort or just something important on the outside as you look on the left uh, there of this particular uh, check, it looks like a, um, let me go back here, it looks like an important document. So this particular document is, is trifolded, uh, and then you'll be able to, you won't be able to see this message on the inside, but all you see is the outside. So you will tear off the edges, and once you tear off the edges, uh, you'll be able to see the inside of the mm -hmm. the, per, the, the particular message that you're trying to convey to this person. This is very interesting. This, this is very interesting. Um, um, is the uh, is the price the same? Is the postage the same for sending this as far as the letter? Oh no, no. This is this is uh, relatively cheaper. Uh, this really? actually is fifty nine cents 
I think sending out a thousand or more. Really? Wow. Yes. Okay. Okay. So it's it's a little 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 over half the uh, cost of a yellow letter. And what uh-huh. we found is that it is it, right there in that sweet spot. It's, it's doing uh, better than a postcard, uh, but it's not doing as well as a yellow letter yet. Uh, uh, as we're uh-huh. collecting our data, uh, mm-hmm. we're, we're, you know, I don't think anything is as good of, as a yellow letter, but I'm, mm-hmm. it is definitely a, a great product to use. Uh, it's definitely doing better than a, a postcard right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, as we move on uh, with collecting more data, we'll be able to share more with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, these, these are some of the fronts that we have uh, that you can choose from, uh, different fronts of, of styles uh, that – a person may say, "Hey, I, I like this style better. I think this would, this one seems a little bit more important uh, for my prospects, and so I think this particular type of document would, would work for me." And uh, like again, like I said before, the license from a government agency or payroll department. Uh, th- this particular type of document we're, we're seeing really gets people um, reacting uh, to the to the letters, and some of them. Are even saying, hey, we like it even better than the yellow letter, um, depending on their their particular target market. That I've I've spoken to a few investors across the country that said, uh, you know, some of them don't like the yellow letter in their market because they feel like they're being tricked uh, with the zip letter. They know that it's an official document; it looks like something professional, and um, you know, we really like the fact that you know they're responding to us um, in a particular way in our market. So uh, definitely. Uh, some of the investors are, are really excited about using it and, um, and and are loving it right now. So uh, pretty much going over the outside of it again, uh, it looks professional. It looks like it's important. And on the inside, it's customized. Um, you know, it's saying receive uh, cash fast for your property at that particular person's address. And then uh, this particular zip letter is a check. And so it looks like as though you're writing a check for the property uh, for the individual uh, of an intent, so you're pretty much say, telling them you're sending them a blank check. We'll we'll fill it out when we sit at your table. You know, we'll, we'll work out that number when we sit at the table. So that it gives that person a initiative to contact you and say, "Oh, this person is, is wanting to write me a check uh, for my home." So you know, let me give them a call and let's see if we can work out a deal. Hmm. That's very interesting. Okay. Yeah, that's very interesting. Hmm. Okay. Then we also have a, a different type of zip letter. And you can see this is a, on the uh, left side. It's a, another outside style that we use. But um, on the right side is another way to be able to get your prospect to contact you. Uh, again, at the top, it has your, that particular person's address. Can put cash in your pocket fast, bringing a call to action to that individual. Then you have your message there. And then what's interesting about this particular one, again, we have the QR code there where you can place your QR code, and that person can have the option to scan it and go to your landing page, fill out some information, learn more about uh, what you're about and what you offer. Uh, but then at the bottom there, you have a area where that person can cut off the actual zip letter, fill out their information, and send that information back to you. Uh, so it's pretty much telling them that you know they're in, they're checking out that they're interested in signing the pro- uh, selling their property. They're filling in their address and information. Um, they're they're putting out putting writing in how much they think that their house is worth. Uh, in that area and saying uh-huh. uh, what they would sell the property for. And these are pretty much basic questions that all of us uh-huh. investors would ask. Interesting. Can I ask a question? What do you think of the idea about instead of sending three yellow letters to alternate, you know, maybe one yellow letter and one of these? Oh, yes. That, that, that's exactly what we recommend. We've actually created a, a combo pack um, that we're going to talk about in, in just a moment. Uh-huh. And so as we're finishing up the zip letters, they're also good for – we also offer them for real estate invest, uh, real estate agents as well. Uh, so if they're wanting to customize it, uh, put their listing of homes that they have there, 
uh, they can use that as well. We also offer it to uh, real estate uh, agents for them to use their use it for their listings. Uh, and then we, we can go over some of the, the main prospect groups. Um, as once we get done with it, we're going to go into our uh, combo packs. And some of the main prospect groups are absentee owners, whether they're out of state, out of the area, or in the city, uh, owner occupied, uh, mortgage lates, NODs, inherited, and probate. And uh, particularly uh, for for these type of lists, we'll recommend uh, for an absentee list that it be 40% equity or greater, uh, seven years of ownership that the the owners have had access and have owned the home for at least seven years. Uh, that it be three to five bedrooms, single family, that is not corporate owned nor trust owned. And so those are just some recommendations uh, for that one. And, and on the occupied one, uh, pretty much kind of the same information, just a little bit different. Again, uh, 40% equity or greater, 15-year uh, ownership, at least 15 years, uh, three to five bedrooms, again, single family, not corporate owned nor trust owned. But with the owner occupied, we usually recommend that the owner is 65 years or older, and these are just these are things that we've developed just across the nation. Of course, they you can kind of tweak these depending on the area that you're in. I'm pretty sure Phyllis has some great uh, 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 ideas, especially in her area. Of these 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 probably numbers wouldn't work probably for her area, or she have something different. Uh, but definitely, uh, you know, every area is is a bit different, but. Just some information that we, we give to people because some of the new investors don't know where to start, how to start, but this is just some some information that you can use um, to, move, to move forward. Uh, mortgage late, 30, 60, 90, 120, uh, pretty much a person late on the notice. Uh, an NOD, make sure that it's between 1 to 90 days. An inheritance list, make sure that it's a new inheritance list. Uh, same with probates. Um, make sure that they're new. You have people out there selling you. Um, old list, and you know, beware of that. I'm pretty sure Phyllis can shine some light on that as well. Been in the industry so long uh, that you have people out there that will sell you old lists and not give you current information. Uh, that you, that list may be very old, so you know, you kind of want to be be aware of uh, getting something that's up to date. But uh, the question that Phyllis had asked earlier was how many times of mailing and the type of mailings that we provide. Uh, maybe doing a follow-up with the zip letter. So what we recommend uh, a lot of the time is do a yellow letter followed up by, the, by a zip letter uh, and then finish it off with a postcard. So what you would do is... Oh, that's interesting. Uh-huh. You're, you're, okay. for your first month, you will say, for instance, we are in July. Our first mailing goes out. We sell out our first short letter. It's going to be going out. We're going to get our calls in, uh, going, and then Come August, we are sending out a zip letter. We're doing a follow-up zip letter. But then in September, we're going to finish that same group off with the postcard. Just in case there's anybody lingering that we may have forgot or uh, they may have, you know, put our information down and may have was looking for it, we just hit them one more time to be able to just you know, wipe them off our list. But you want to make sure that uh, you're, you're mailing to them at least three times. And what 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 I usually recommend is if you want a consistency, if you want a, a consistency of calls coming in, and especially if you're going to be doing direct mail marketing, would be to do it this way. You send out a mailing, say, for instance, in July, you're going to start your campaign. Your first campaign, you're going to send your first yellow letter in July. Then come August, you're going to send out your, your first your, your, your follow-up zip letter. But in August, mm-hmm. you're now starting a new campaign and sending out your first yellow letter to a whole new mm-hmm. prospect group. So come September, you're now mm-hmm. finishing off that first group with the postcard, and then you're, you're doing your, your second campaign is, is doing a follow-up with the zip letter. But then in September, you're also mm-hmm. starting a whole new List and campaign with the with the yellow letter, and you just continue to have that flow of uh, new mailing follow up and finishing off uh, with your mailing. And you 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 now created a campaign, an official campaign, consistent campaign for yourself uh, to continue to move forward. Uh, 
uh, which is which is very 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 important uh, when you're dealing, especially with direct mail. But you know, if you have any questions, any concerns, uh, you can definitely give us a call. Go to yellowletters.com. Uh, give us a call. You can give us. We can try to answer any any questions that you have uh, for us, and we'll be glad. We'll be definitely glad uh, to help you. You can reach us at. 888-968-7624. And, and when you call or even if you, you go online, make sure you can get yourself a 5% discount uh, using Phyllis 5. Get yourself a 5% discount uh, with using Phyllis, uh, the great uh, investor down in L.A., taking L.A. by storm. Uh, <laughs> definitely, definitely want to use her 5% to be able to get yourself a discount and um, save yourself some money. Yeah, I truly believe in this. I'm doing it myself, and I truly believe this is the only way you're really going to get uh, anything today. I mean, it, unless you want to go out and door knock, this is the only other way to really get results. I definitely, definitely agree with that. So, um, so that was really um, great, Patrick. You gave us some terrific information, and I'm really glad that um, that you did. If, if anybody has any questions, um, is there a place where they can email you to get some kind of answers or something like that? Do you want to put sure. that in there? Want to sure, they can, your, uh, yeah, you can definitely well, email me. You can, you can email me directly at patrickjackson at yellowletters.com. Again, that's uh -huh. patrickjackson uh -huh. at yellowletters.com, and, and I'll be glad to answer any questions or concerns that okay. anyone has and, um, you know, be able to help okay. you out the best of my ability. Okay, if you want to get started, we've got this up on our website, so that we're going to have a little, like a little blurb under our preferred vendors, and you're going to be able to see this, and you'll be able to, um, you know, go. At, well, let me, and it'll tell you exactly. It'll click through and tell you exactly how to get started, and and um, you should do this. You should definitely do this. So. Um, I thank once again, thanks again, Patrick. We're going to keep this up on our website so they can go there anytime. We're not just going to send it out as a one-time okay. thing because I think it's really important, and I think you guys are doing. So thanks again, and we're going to sign off, and uh, we're going to get started on our li our new list now. Okay. So thanks again, Sounds Patrick. Great. Okay. No thanks. problem. Okay. Bye bye. Okay.